that. Oh man, one of the king sandwiches right there. Holy cow. Everything good in the world starts with butter. Come on, we know this. I know this. You know this. Trish knows this. Hi Trish. There's Trish's hand. One more time. A little slower. People appreciate the hand. Say hi to Trish. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, let me stir this while we chat for a second. Trish is already running in for cheese, man. She's already there. The hand's in. There goes the cheese. That's a lot of cheese. I took out the exact amount. All right, if this recipe seems uh, a little low on cheese, talk to the hand. Remember the hand? You remember the hand? The hand's about to shove cheese in her mouth. There we go, I love it. So let's go ahead and get this started. So today slash tonight, boys and girls, we're on a journey. Take a step back, Trish, and look at this. Look at what we've done tonight. I couldn't just come out with a burger and a bun, maybe some bacon, a pickle, right? Make it easy. Call it a Friday night. Trish is like, yeah, dude, seriously, it's third Friday. Get the hell out of here. No, 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 no. I had to take on, I mean, this this is like sandwich royalty night, man. I got a neat video to play for you later for a little time I spent in New Orleans with, I had a lot of fun with, uh, to get a little bit of inspiration for this. But holy cow, uh, it's not just an oysters po' boy. Uh, po boy. I'm going to screw that up so many times tonight. I'm so sorry. Po' boy, all right? Uh, it's an oysters Rockefeller po' boy. So let's start looking for just a second about what we got to do to make this Rockefeller sauce magic happen so guys this is how we're going to do our homemade oysters rockefeller sauce for our homemade oysters rockefeller pool boy sandwiches got it right that's all i need for the entire edit from there on in trish will just shoot me from here down and it doesn't matter what i say i'll just put it in later so uh the only thing i've started without you guys uh is two sticks of butter one and a half cups of diced onion and three tablespoons of diced garlic Diced garlic is a good time if you don't have a gadget to dice garlic, go get a gadget to dice garlic. Dice, not squish, not smush, not mince, not cream, not this, diced. Because we're trying to sweat and pull a lot of flavor out of these onions and out of this garlic to start off, okay? Uh, the next thing we're going to hit it with in just a second here, no kidding. hey -o! What the? Hey, Flaming Van de Zambuca, I think that's what that's close to. Uh, you're going to want four ounces of liqueur of anise, anise liqueur, that. All right. It, it smells like black licorice. If it smells like black uh, licorice, which my mom loves, I hate, you know, you've got it right. Uh, two cups of bread flour you're going to need for this stuff. Uh, now, use unseasoned. And if you are going to get seasoned, uh, get the ones that seasoned with Romano. OK, two pounds of thawed out frozen spinach. That hopefully will look better once it gets in there. Uh, four cups of half and half. So if you thought for one second this was going to be healthy, <laughs> you are so wrong. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about the buns in a minute there. You're going to need some oil for frying, a pot for frying later. Now, spicy, spicy wise, we've got two tablespoons of granulated garlic, two tablespoons of granulated onion, one tablespoon of white pepper, and a half a tablespoon of thyme. That's ground thyme. I uh, know, is that, that what is ground? There's ground, there's, there's bits, there's fresh. If you have bits or ground, you're fine. Bits or ground. And one and a half, mm, minus one trish handful of uh of grated parm mm -mm -mm. so this is for the rockefeller okay uh we're going to put this together and then once this is all getting to happen uh we're actually going to make our own you got to be kidding me the, the fried oysters here so this is a fun friday night guys all right so i've babbled long enough so here's what we're going to do trish don't get too close into this this is our this is our flaming zambuca time here we go just going to go ahead oh boy you know what before we do this Safety first. We've got oil going on over here on my fantastic Charbroil Signature Series True Infrared Grill. Three burners. <laughs> Come on over. Always have a thermometer. Uh, you want to, uh, Oil can be tricky, so you want to watch out. I'm at about 350. I'm going to be happy uh, with between 375 and 400 before I start uh, uh, evacuating the premises. So we got a little bit of time. Everything's good. All right, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, Zambuca. So uh, if you're using an open flame burner like I am here, this kind of stuff can flash up and flare. So just, you know... Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Get it on there. All right. Nothing so far. That's fantastic. Mm. Yum. Now, at this point, this isn't anything I'd ever eat. Okay? Because of all well, the licorice, you know. But we got we got Parmesan to get in there. We got so many spices to get in there. Look what's happening. That butter's getting all dark. Trish wants a whiff. How's that? This is where 
Trish sets her bangs on fire right there. <laughs> is it good? It smells like black licorice. I hate black licorice. But I'm going to like this. I know I like Rockefeller sauce. All right. Uh, let's turn this up just a little. So now uh, we got that in there. Let's go ahead and get our spices in there just like this. So remember what we got there in case you missed it. In case you tuned in late, uh, two tablespoons each of granulated garlic and onion, one tablespoon of black pepper, and a half a tablespoon of thyme. What? What's going on? Uh, we don't want to go. There we are. Florida, man. Florida. Oh, yeah, everything just gets gummy. Get gl uh, glue doesn't stick to anything out here. It's crazy. Every, everybody who's under three feet of snow is like, yeah, sing it, sing it for us, brother. Sing us your woes. What else, what else is making you sad today? All right, let's go. Let's get that on there. I, I'm, I'm going to pre-apologize to Trish if I get splashing her here. It's going to be the best. Maybe, maybe this is going to be the best. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to hit you with that caveat, that whole maybe thing, because as I put the cream in here and then bring it back up to a boil, I've never made this before. This is a first for me. Never tried it. So I'm breaking one of my little cardinal rules here, is, uh, which is don't try stuff live. Oh, here's the other caveat. There's three of them running in right now. The chickens are out. All right, so what that means is uh, every now and then you may see a chicken, hear a chicken, but I'll tell you what, if these little buggers come behind here and start clicking at my ankles again, what they're going to be is the subject of the next episode. That's what they're going to be. Mmm, yummy. I got uh, things back here to smoke them, fry them, grill them, saute them, roast them, whatever. What else can I do? <laughs> All right, so we're going to bring that back up to a bubble. There they come. Here they come. I'm about to get attacked by chickens. Look at this. This video evidence. Huh? Well, they like oysters. They do not. Well, they probably do like. They like everything, don't they? Hey, so while this is happening, let's do the bread. Come on over here. Uh, uh, French rolls. That's all you're looking for here. I brought out four. I think I have an oyster, uh, enough oysters uh, for three of these. Cut them in half, so six pretty decent size sandwiches. So let's go ahead. Now this is garlic butter. You know what's happening here. The chickens get very excited every time that we're in a, a non-poultry or fowl-related episode. So uh, this qualifies for that. They're as happy as can be. So they're, you know, they're joining us. But I'll tell you what, man, when it's like Nashville hot chicken night, they are locked in their cage. They want no part of it. Here we go. Then I got emails. Trish is, Trish is, see, you know what this is? This is just mindless babble. Just from uh, being used to being on live TV or doing big presentations or just dead air. You're never supposed to have dead air. So you just think of any nonsensical thing to talk your way through while you... But Oh, Trish from Clearwater has a question. Great. Trish, 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 Trish to save me. Well, yes, Trish. You probably know this. Oh, gosh. Because, because uh, the Rockefellers like this dish. Was it named after... Wow. I have done absolutely no research on wow. this. So I'm going to guess. I'm going to say yes. Yes. Uh, and, and, until further notified, this was the favorite dish of John J. Rockefeller, oil tycoon and multimillionaire and famous American businessman. So here we go. Uh, guys, I fired up my Blackstone to toast these buns because there's no better uh, uh, toast that I want to get than on a flat top. All right. I just, that, that, that's as good as it gets right there. Let's crank that up just a little bit. So now what I'm going to do, bring this back up to a simmer is get the spinach in. come on in here spinach shot can't miss the spinach shot there we are let's get our spinach in there oh this is gonna be very nice this is just gonna be really really nice you guys start to be able to kind of taste this yet you're gonna uh, oh by the way hey i gotta tell you something if you ever been to one of these places and uh you order uh, one of these sandwiches, and it's like fourteen ninety five, fifteen ninety five, sixteen ninety five, and you're like, what in the world are they doing so expensive? If that's how you talk. There's a reason, man. By the time, <laughs> especially this Rockefeller, I was I was at the grocery store this morning. I'm like, man, I got to invite more people to, to make one or two of these things. So definitely a special event sandwich, without a doubt. Uh, so this is doing really good here. So our last couple of binding ingredients, once we get this back up to a simmer, is of course going to be our cheese and our breadcrumbs. So let's check our buns. It's bun checking time. Come on, one of our favorite times of the evening. There we are. Whoa. Oh, 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 look at that. Look at that flat top magic. Hey, so there we go. Let's turn you over, turn you over, and uh, whatever. <laughs> Let's just get them back here for now. Oh, my gosh. They're warm. They're lovely. That's so nice. God, those are great. Oh, wasp flying around my head. You might want to get this on camera. There we go. As I run off like a five-year-old girl. Here we go. Let's sit our... Buns back here. We'll bring one up for our first sandwich. When it's oh, 
okay. This is just fun. That's what this is. This is just fun. All right, so now let's get our cheese in here. Uh, I would suggest a slightly larger pot next time. <laughs> Man alive. Now, of course, uh, we're making an awful lot of sauce here. Uh, this is something you can scale down without question. Uh, I, I, I knew that I wanted to make a bigger batch so I could freeze this. This is going to freeze really well. There we go. But yeah, by all means, you know, I just kind of, <laughs> you can probably go with about a quarter of what we're looking at today. And then let's just finish this off with our breadcrumbs. Perfect. Yum. All right, let's turn this down. Yeah, Trisha's stepping back. Trisha's in the splash zone. Oh, look at this. Look, 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 look. The Parmesan cheese is starting to melt in there. This is really starting to come together. Wow. This is great. I wish you guys could smell this. If you've ever had Oysters Rockefeller, I mean, you know when it comes to the table, you get hit with that smell of parm because we use that Romano uh, uh, kind of infused breadcrumbs. We're getting a big hint of that. That ouzo, I'm telling you, that uh, anise that, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm not a real big fan of has just like just disappeared right into this. So it's not overwhelming, uh, which it can be in a lot of recipes. This is fabulous. So uh, when you get to this point, you guys, uh, just a personal taste thing. Uh, if you want to thicken it up, go ahead and thicken it up with a little bit more cheese. If you want to thin it out, go ahead and thin it out with a little bit more cream. We've got a nice, great big batch here. We're going to do some oyster shows coming up. We're going to have lots and lots and lots of fun. So Trish is going to go ahead and turn that heat off. There we go. And so we've taken care of our sauce. We're just going to leave this in the pan to do it. So oh, that's just beautiful. All right. So here's what we're going to do, you guys. Uh, I'm going to relight my uh, my oil here, so this is nice and hot, because now we're moving on to the actual oyster part of this. You going to try that? You got a little spoonful? What do you think? Let's try this first. It's very hot. Oh, it's very hot. <laughs> wow. Just imagine that on a sandwich. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, the uh, the yeah the uh, the liqueur isn't that something? It just yeah it just cooked right off. There we go. It's like the mustard when you uh, you put that on a on a, on a roast and smoke it just cooks right away. There we are. Wow. All right. Uh, so listen, <laughs> this whole show is inspired by a trip that I took. Uh, for Blackstone, actually, this is great. Uh, we, we went to New Orleans. Uh, while I do a little bit of a reset here and get ready to get the oysters ready, I want you guys to have a look here because this was super fun. We'll even talk about it when we come back, guys. Check this It isn't a road trip unless you hit the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana. To us, New Orleans means one thing, incredible food. We're in New Orleans with my good buddy Jay Ducote, founding father of Government Taco. Tell Hello, me about Nate. what we got going on the griddle today, my yeah, friend. This, look, this Blackstone griddle is amazing. We've got some andouille sausage. This oh, is yeah. one of those famous Louisiana sausages. Oh, you come to New Orleans, you get the real stuff. Let's make some po' boys, Creole Louisiana style. You can't come to New Orleans and not get a fried shrimp po' boy. If you right? can, well, let's make some. <laughs> All right, this griddle is perfect. Oh yeah. oh, look at that. oh, yeah. Oh, man. One of the things I love about this Blackstone yeah. griddle, it's so tough, you can actually cut right on that surface. That is beautiful. Ooh. You get a little sear on this side. Yeah. Smelling it coming off the griddle, too. It's like this is where the party is. Let's uh, toast the bread right over here. Yeah. You know, while this sausage is going, let's check out over here. I've got my fryer. We have some shrimp. Oh, can do uh, some shrimp po' boys. I love this feature. We can just fry these up to crispy perfection. You don't have to come to New Orleans to get this kind of food because if you have this Blackstone griddle with this fryer combination yep. right here, you can do this in your backyard. You can bring New Orleans to your backyard. Absolutely. And who's getting the first one? Right here. Hey, there you go. So we're gonna put some ramelade down first. Okay. Bottom so there. we like some shredded lettuce. With so you can finally shredded really lettuce. Nice. Yeah. You like to load it up. Let's let's line these up kind of on the side here. Our sausage is perfectly caramelized. It looks amazing. Let's, where's Mark? Mark's totally missing out. Mark, get over here, Mark. buddy. Here I am, man. <laughs> we got we got on Dewey on the flat top. We need Mark here. <laughs> Talk about anything, anytime, anywhere. Look at this. Oh god. Yeah. You know, you you come to New Orleans, you get some Gulf shrimp. Man, nothing's better than that. This is like the the candy of the sea right here. The, the shrimp. It's like having a restaurant in your backyard. Yeah. There's still some in the basket, Jay. A little bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. Bon appetit. Here we go. Uh, mm. Oh, yeah. That is fabulous. It's really good. <laughs> I'll take two. All right, so guys, look what we've done here. Uh, uh, we've got our Rockefeller sauce going here. We're going to kind of separate that out into a different video. Uh, uh, later for people that just want that recipe. So a lot of times you'll do the uh, oysters, put them right back in the shell, you know what I mean? Then bake them in the oven or smoker. We'll do that with it too. That's a lot of fun. Well, let's do this. Okay. So 
<laughs> Ooh, here we go, Trish. Get on in here. Get get a good shot of this slimy goodness. Here, ooh, my goodness. I think Trish just got attacked by one of our giant Florida mosquitoes. There we go. Oh, look at that sucker. That's a big one. Uh-huh. One, two. There we go. And these are pretty quick. These these should fry up in about two to three minutes. Not gonna take long at all. There we go. Oh, this is lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trish, I don't think Trish thinks so. I don't think Trish thinks this is lovely at all. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, here we go. We're just going to take these right over. All right? And a little one. Medium size one. Now I'm not much for like the raw ones, like the like the just the the sliding down your throat thing. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't my not thing, those. huh? Yeah. yeah, I gotta pass on those. It oh, it was not a good morning, <laughs> says Trish from Clearwater. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do this in like two batches. So let me make sure. Oh my God, that's one big. That's one sandwich in itself. Why are the chickens running here? They smell, they smell oysters frying. You birds are weird, man. If my omelets smell, it tastes like oysters next week, I just, we're going to have a problem. So, yeah, you want to be, uh, you know, either in your fryer, nice heavy cast iron, however it is you want to do it, uh, but a couple of inches of oil in the bottom there, and you're aiming for about 375, somewhere in there. Listen, frying's okay as long as you fry right. Do it at the right temperature. Make sure you do it for the right time. Uh, uh, it's better to be over a couple of degrees than under. <laughs> How about you guys? You want an oyster sandwich? Yeah, you do. All right, Trish. Um, let's go ahead and get these out. Oh, yeah. This is perfect. I'll tell you, uh, uh, when I went down to Louisiana to film that, that, uh, that little gem we just watched there, it's exactly what I did, man. I found just one of those just local hole-in-the-walls. just had the best darn po' boy I think I've ever had my whole life. I think I got a shrimp one. Uh, we're going to do the shrimp Rockefeller, too, just, just to... Oh, yeah, that Rockefeller sauce, man. That's just out of this world. All right, here we go. Perfect. So I'll tell you what, let's just let this drain for a second while we get the other ones in. All right, so here we go. We've got the makings of a perfect sandwich. So let's go over to our sandwich making station. So remember what we've got here. Our French bread, all right? Uh, we put it on the flat top and we seared that garlic butter into it. The chickens are very excited. I, I, I hear you boys. I'm with you. Now we're going to take a good amount of shredded lettuce. There we go. Uh, I'm not going to put tomatoes on this one because oysters, unlike shrimp, have a lot of juice in them already. Let's be honest here. Uh, so I don't want it to be too wet of a sandwich by adding silly tomatoes to the mix. So let's go. Oh man. So the, the goal here is to uh, cut this in half and make this kind of two little sandwiches. So one, two, three, four, there we go. Perfect, wow, that's gonna be fantastic. And then of course, what's what? Well, that's gonna be for the next sandwiches. We have more sandwiches to make. <laughs> Here we go, this is fantastic. Now if you want, you can also garnish this on top with a little bit extra grated parmesan but because we have the romano in here we got enough flavor there wow you look at that you guys is that something holy cow all right here we go oh yeah, yeah. oh man i'll tell you for our first effort <laughs> I, I am i am pretty darn happy with this look at that Oh man, one of the kings of sandwiches right there. That is an oysters Rockefeller po' boy on French bread. That is just out of this world. Look at that. All right, I gotta go in for a bite. You ready? <laughs> That's unbelievable. Wow. Holy cow. That's amazing. This is great. Holy. Mmm. Mmm. Whoa, well, guys, if you have the opportunity, try this. This is amazing. Mmm. Mmm. I would even 
add a little cream to a little bit extra of this. They make it almost a runnier sauce on a sandwich. Oh, God, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's really something, you guys. Holy cow. Mm-mm-mm. Trish is getting back in there. Wow. I'm just so distracted. Usually by now I've... I've had a nice wrap up and we got something to say and holy cow, we just I don't usually get distracted by a dish that I make on my show. This was fantastic. Wow. We're gonna make those last two and wrap it up, man. We got some deliveries to make. My name is Mark Gill. This has been Mark's on the Grill. See you next time. <laughs>